नमस्कार इन दिस सेशन आई डिस्कस अबाउट वॉट आर द मिल्क बाय प्रोडक्ट्स एंड हाउ दे आर अफेक्टिवली यूटिलाइज सो वंस वी टॉक अबाउट द मिल्क बाय प्रोडक्ट्स द की ऑपरेशन द की यूनिट ऑपरेशन टू विच मिल्क इज सब्जेक्टेड टू इन ए डेरी प्लान ड्यूरिंग प्रोसेसिंग ड्यूरिंग पास्चराइजेशन इज द क्रीम सेपरेशन वंस द मिल्क इज सब्जेक्टेड टू सेपरेशन प्रोसेस टू प्रोडक्ट्स आर मैन्युफैक्चर्ड वन इज क्रीम एंड अदर इज द स्किम मिल्क एंड वंस द क्रीम इज सब्जेक्टेड टू चर्निंग प्रोसेस फॉर कन्वर्टिंग इन टू बटर टू प्रोडक्ट्स आर जनरेटेड वन इज कॉल्ड एज बटर एंड अदर इज कॉल्ड एज द बटर मिल्क बटर इज द मेन प्रोडक्ट वाइल इन केस ऑफ क्रीम चर्निंग द बटर मिल्क इज द बाय प्रोडक्ट सिमिलरली ड्यूरिंग सेपरेशन प्रोसेस द मेन प्रोडक्ट इज द क्रीम एंड द बाय प्रोडक्ट इज द स्किम मिल्क इफ वी सी अप्रॉक्सीमेटली फॉर एवरी हंड्रेड के जी ऑफ मिल्क सेपरेटेड अराउंड एट्टी फाइव के जी ऑफ स्किम मिल्क इज जनरेटेड एंड फॉर एवरी हंड्रेड के जी ऑफ क्रीम चर्न यू गेट अराउंड फिफ्टी टू के जी ऑफ बटर मिल्क so skim milk and butter milk they are generated in huge quantities similarly once we are manufacturing chana and other such products lot of whey is generated so in a dairy plant skim milk butter milk and whey these are the three main by products i have told you that skim milk and butter milk they contain all other solids except fat and they are produced when cream and butter are manufactured so once you separate out milk so you get skim milk and cream all the fat goes with the cream and skim milk is the defatted milk similarly cheese whey it contains almost all the milk sugar that is lactose and mineral matter and it is produced during manufacturing of chana or you can say paneer and the cheese during manufacturing of chana and cheese the whey is generated skim milk butter milk and whey they are the main by products in the dairy industry in some cases such huge quantities of skim milk when they are generated it they are skim milk is also taken as the main product and it is not considered as a by product so skim milk butter milk and whey if we see their composition it is more or less it is same with regard to fat content protein percentage lactose percentage ash water and the lactic acid content once we see the composition of skim milk after separation the fat content present in its is in the range of 0.1 to 0.5% in butter milk the fat percentage is approximately 0.4% butter milk is generated by churning the cream into butter and whey the fat content is on an average it is around 0.3% and i have already told you i repeat once again that whey is generated when we manufacture chana or cheese from the milk so skim milk is generated as a by product while process of cream separation is carried out butter milk is generated while churning of cream takes place and whey is generated when products such as chana and cheese are manufactured the protein content of skim milk is 3.5% butter milk is 3.4% and whey is 0.9 so the protein content in skim milk and butter milk is approximately the same as that of milk while in whey most of its protein goes in the cheese or paneer the main protein that is casein goes with the chana and cheese and only a some portion goes remains in whey so whey is deficient in the protein content and it contains mainly the whey proteins which are primarily alpha lactalbumin and beta lactoglobulin the main protein casein goes in the main product the principal protein of the milk that is casein goes in the main product that is chana and the cheese lactose that is the milk sugar it is almost the whole lactose is in skim milk that is 5.1% in skim milk in butter milk 4.5% and in whey 
it is lactose is 4.9. So, whey along with mineral matter its presence is same as in that of the original milk. The ash on mineral matter 0 0.7 percent is in the skim milk, buttermilk is also it is 0 0.7 percent, whey it is 0 0.6 percent. In normal which is not subjected to either cream separation or any other further unit operation, the ash content varies 0 0.85 to 1 percent. The water percentage of skim milk, buttermilk and whey it varies in skim milk it is 90.5 percent, buttermilk 91 and whey is 93 percent. So, water content in all the three byproducts that is skim milk, buttermilk and whey it is almost the same. Now, skim milk lactic acid content as lactic acid skim milk may be the acidity it may vary from 0 0.10 to 0 0.15 percent lactic acid and it depends upon the acidity of milk which is subjected to the process of cream separation. Similarly, in butter milk also its acidity is around 0 0.1 percent and it depends upon the acidity of cream which is subjected to the cream separation. Where the acidity is 0 0.3 to 0 0.35 percent and uh, here whey is slightly acidic and because of this. So, we have seen this is the composition of all the main byproducts which are generated once the milk is subjected to process of cream separation, buttermilk is generated once the cream is subjected to process of churning and whey is separated once the product like chhena that is paneer or cheese they are manufactured. So, it is because they economically they have high value all these things, but skim milk, butter milk, whey they have to be effectively utilized. Skim milk is a product many times it is taken as main product only. Skim milk it contains all the solid not fat present in the original milk and skim milk is primary utilized for standardization purposes. Skim milk is a product which is primarily used for toning of milk. Once we are generating toned milk, so an equal quantity of buffalo milk is mixed with the same quantity of skim milk for toning down the fat. So, if we mix 100 kg of buffalo milk with 100 kg of skim milk, we will get resultant toned milk which will be having approximately 3 percent fat and 8.7 to 8.8 percent SNF. And then for every 100 kg of milk which is subjected to separation process, we get approximately 85 kg of skim milk and 15 kg of cream. This 15 kg of cream will be subjected to churning and then we will get the whey. Skim milk, I have already told you it can be considered as main product also because of the huge volumes of skim milk generated. Skim milk utilization is the for regenerating milk. Dilution of skim milk results into toning down the fat number 2 manufacturing of skim milk powder or this is the defatted milk is converted into SMP which has huge applications in regenerating milk along with butter. In the summer season and during the period of shortage when the market demand is high, but availability of fresh natural milk is lesser. In that case the preserved SNF in form of skim milk powder is converted along with uh, preserved fat that is white butter and butter oil. They are homogenized and you get the toned milk or double toned milk or milk of any composition as per the requirement. So, it find its application in uh, regenerating milk during the lean periods. Then skim milk can be also converted into condensed skim milk and condensed skim milk also has the same applications. It is utilized for regenerating milk during the period of scarcity in manufacture of ice cream, in baking industry or any such application where milk solids in concentrated form are required. Then casein which is the major principal protein of milk approximately 80 percent of milk protein is nothing but casein. 
skim casein is manufactured only from the skim milk casein is the i am telling you it is a protein which is manufactured out of the milk protein and it is finding its application in paints industry gum industry and preparation of various type of milk foods like caseinates etc and fourth application where of skim milk is the conversion of skim milk into one particular cheese which is called as cottage cheese so skim milk which is a major by product that is one subject 100 kg of milk to cream separation process you get 85 kg of skim milk liquid skim milk and 15 kg of cream and that liquid skim milk can be converted into skim milk powder condensed skim milk casein and cottage cheese primarily we go for condensed and dry skim milk for condensing skim milk concentration is raised from 9% snf in skim milk to 28 to 30% in double effect or triple effect evaporator then this is packed in barrels or plastic containers for utilization in confectionery industries or for regenerating milk along with butter oil or white butter the condensed skim milk is also used as an ingredient in ice cream manufacturing and it serves as a source of serum solids or milk snf because of concentration the long distance transportation becomes possible and it entails lower transportation cost because if we are transporting milk as such we have to transport huge volumes through long distances but if we concentrate and condense the milk to its total solid content of 30 to 5% 35 to 40% total solid we will have to incur lesser transportation cost for transporting higher volumes of milk so for long distance transportation from the areas where lot of milk is there to the areas where milk is required the skim milk is condensed and transported which is further regenerated into toned milk double toned milk or for any other purpose skim milk i have earlier also told skim milk is also utilized for casein making casein is principal protein of milk 80% milk protein is casein 20% is the whey protein that is alpha lacta albumin and beta lactoglobulin edible casein is used as an ingredient in many dairy and food products casein is used for manufacturing of paper for water resistant glues plastics cold water paints fiber and food binders etc casein is either it is classified on basis of precipitating acid used whether it is hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid lactic casein the casein is produced by precipitating it with lactic culture in case of rennet casein rennet is deployed as coagulant for precipitating the casein i have told you earlier that skim milk is also utilized for manufacture of cottage cheese if we see the details skim milk for manufacturing of cottage cheese which is an unripened soft cheese has approximately 0.4 to 1.9% fat protein content is 13 to 21% lactose is 0.2 to 1% it is deficient in lactose and water content is 71 to 80% while in other cheeses the moisture content may be very low in cottage cheese the moisture content is very high it has lesser keeping quality and it is to be consumed immediately after production because it has a very lesser keeping quality not like cheddar cheese or other type of hard cheeses in manufacturing the process the pasteurized skim milk is inoculated with 5% starter culture and inoculation is done at 25 degree centigrade after 8 to 10 hour curd is formed which is cut with the curd knives and slowly cooked at a temperature of 32 degree centigrade and then after cutting it is it is pressed 
and then that pressed mass, it is not thoroughly pressed, unpressed mass or with a lesser concentration, it, it is sold as such. Now, we have seen the utilization of skim milk, which is a byproduct, which is generated once the milk is subjected to the process of cream separation. The vital utilization of skim milk is for manufacturing of skim milk powder, which is utilized primarily for regenerating milk during the lean season. The another application is the conversion of skim milk into condensed skim milk, which is for transporting higher volumes of milk at long distances and for again regenerating into milk then is utilization of skim milk for casein making and then finally, the cottage cheese. Next, we come to buttermilk. Buttermilk is the byproduct which is obtained during manufacturing of butter. So, cream, it is chilled at 8 to 10 degree centigrade subjected to uh, churning process. As an outcome of butter churning, the white butter is manufactured and the byproduct which is generated is the buttermilk. So, if you separate out 40 percent fat cream, 100 kg cream, you get around 52 kg of buttermilk and 48 kg of white butter. The white butter is heated and converted into ghee, butter oil and such fat rich products while buttermilk is utilized buttermilk again once it is manufactured out of sweet cream can be after chilling to 4 degree centigrade can be utilized for dilution into milk for regenerating milk because it has high solid not fat content in dairy industry sweet buttermilk is primarily utilized for diluting for regenerating into milk. Buttermilk composition, I have already told you, it is uh, similar to skim milk. Then buttermilk can also be like skim milk. It can also be converted into milk powder that is dry buttermilk, that is buttermilk powder. Buttermilk during for manufacturing, the buttermilk is concentrated to approximately 45 percent total solids in multiple effect uh, evaporators and it is spray dried because it has a poor storage stability. Hence, the buttermilk powder should be used as rapidly as possible. The skim milk powder keeping because of the very low moisture content that is say around 4 percent moisture content, it can be stored for approximately more than 12 months at room temperature. While buttermilk powder cannot be stored for such long period and it should be used rapidly, dry buttermilk find its application in making bakery products and in the ice cream where it improves dry buttermilk or buttermilk solids. They work as natural emulsifiers and improve the whipping ability of ice cream mix or the during the incorporation of air while freezing the ice cream mix. Dried buttermilk has good baking properties and it is used in baking industries in making of cakes, pastries biscuits and for such products. Sweet buttermilk after chilling and pasteurization, I have already told you is blended for regenerating milk. The most important thing which is to be washed, which has to be taken care while handling the buttermilk is that we should not allow the cream to become sour because in that case, the sour buttermilk will be generated with higher acidity which will be unfit for regenerating into milk or unfit for 
regenerating into toned milk or double toned milk. So, sweet butter milk immediately from once it is taken out of the butter churn, it should be chilled to 4 degree centigrade or lower temperatures and then mixed into milk before pasteurization which is being standardized for regeneration of toned milk or double toned milk. I have told you about utilization of skim milk which is a byproduct generated during separation of milk into cream and skim milk. I have told you about generation of butter milk which is generated as a byproduct during manufacturing or during churning of cream into white butter and whey largely generated in paneer and cheese industry. Whey the unscrupulous handlers instead of handling the whey they drain it into the general public sewers or drains. So, that should be avoided and because it has a very high way as a very high biochemical oxygen demand BOD value and lot of expenditure has to be incurred in reducing the BOD value of the way and such waste water containing such products to the permissible limits which is in our case in our country is 30 ppm BOD value of the uh, way and other such uh, waste material which is being before its discharge into public sewer it should be less than 30. Value of whey protein is such that they are also may be insolubilized by heat. So, they have to be taken due care during their application. Whey protein may be used in various foods, fermented products from whey used in manufacturing of yeast, alcohol, lactic acid, vitamins and alcohol. But major utilization is the dried whey and its application in the ice cream industry and the bakery industry. I was talking about the dried whey, whey is also concentrated that is plain or sweetened condensed whey. The most important utilization of whey is the manufacture of lactose. Lactose is a milk sugar which is roughly one sixth as sweet as cane sugar or sucrose. Lactose is manufactured from the whey and lactose is utilized as a fine has many pharmaceutical applications. Lactose is also used for manufacturing various bakery products and for making lactose the whey is concentrated to a concentration of 50 to 68 percent total solid. Higher the concentration of sugar greater the yield of lactose and every 100 kg of whey gives approximately 4.5 to 5 kg of lactose. The lactose after concentration is crystallized and then the mass is basket centrifuged for separation of mother liquor and dry lactose and the first lot of crude lactose after drying it contains about 85 to 90 percent lactose. So, I conclude three main byproducts that is skim milk which is generated out of once the milk is subjected to cream separation process, then the butter milk which is generated once the cream is subjected to churning and third is whey which is generated when the when the paneer or chena or cheese is manufactured out of cream uh, milk. So, these have very economically they have very high market value and have to be effectively utilized and skim milk which may be a byproduct may be a main product for most of the for many dairy plants and it is its main conversion is into skim milk powder and 
condensed skim milk for generating into toned milk or double toned milk so and for for buttermilk it is again mixed into sweet buttermilk is it is again mixed into milk which is being toned for conversion into uh, which is being toned for making toned milk or double toned milk and the lactose uh, another application uh, of and the for whey it is being converted for whey it is the main source for generating lactose or the main milk lactose or the milk which milk sugar thank you